Elephants are really weird, so I'm sure it comes as no surprise that their ancestors were much the same, but believe me when I say that this lineup has some truly bizarre looking creatures. Such as the Platybelodon, a flat-toothed behemoth that could easily be passed off as a biological excavator. Despite this, however, there's no need to worry, for this creature's strange anatomy can be fully explained in as little as 72 years. It was first discovered in the early 1920s, when the greatest minds of a generation apparently took one look at this thing's face, thought it kind of looked like a shovel, and decided that it definitely was a shovel. Not to imply they thought this 8,000 pound elephant was digging up tunnel systems or anything. It was actually believed that their wonky teeth were used to scoop up aquatic vegetation. But it doesn't really matter, since just a couple years later the whole idea was unceremoniously thrown to the wolves. Instead of water-loving giants scooping seaweed by the spoonful, they were completely reimagined as Miocene lumberjacks, knocking down hardy terrestrial plants and maybe even trees with their serrated teeth. And just like that, Shovelhead was a thing of the past, and Axe Face was the way of the future. Moving on though, many ancient elephants look nothing at all like the current model, and to be fair, that's mostly because some of them weren't even elephants, but they were close enough that I'm still going to talk about them in this video. Like the Paraceratherium, or as I like to call him, the Massive Giraffe Boy. This 20-foot behemoth is tied for the title of biggest land mammal to ever live, the only opposition being the Asian straight-tusked elephant, or if you prefer, the Paleooxodon nomaticus for short. A giant elephant that much more closely fits the topic of this video, but I make the rules around here, and that guy's kind of lame, so we're gonna skip over him. And just to rub salt in the wound, it seems that most sources agree with me, since they cite the Paraceratherium as the de facto biggest mammal without so much as a courtesy nudge to the runner-up. Regardless, despite looking like the unsafe blend of an elephant and giraffe, the Paraceratherium was actually a genus of hornless rhino. And in case you didn't know, rhinos are almost completely unrelated to elephants, despite looking like cousins. Same thing for hippos, which are closer to whales than anything else, while rhinos are just big beefy horses, and the mighty elephant is closest to this bitty rat boy called the Hyrax. And while that might be surprising today, in a world where elephants are famous for their substantial proportions, there have historically been more pint-sized pachyderms than you could shake a bag of peanuts at. One such creature was the Pygmy Mammoth, a five-foot king found off the coast of California and close relative to the Colombian Mammoth, a creature whose name baffles and confuses me for it lived nowhere near Colombia. But what I really want to talk about are the dwarf elephants of Indonesia, specifically the islands of Flores, where tiny elephants were hunted by massive lizards and itty-bitty humans who were themselves hunted by colossal storks and mildly annoyed by giant rats. One thing I'm sure you've already noticed about this motley crew is that every single one of them is exactly the wrong size. And yeah, you're absolutely right. In short, there are a myriad number of ways an island's limited space can affect its occupants, leaving you not only with ankle-biting elephants, but storks tall enough to play professional basketball. Of course, there are plenty more elephants that are well worth a mention, but not much else, like the Baratherium, which is one of the earliest elephant ancestors that could still almost be identified as an elephant, taking the form of what could pretty accurately be described as just a really big taper. Its name means heavy beast, and while it is technically accurate, I feel there are plenty of other animals that such a name would better describe. Like, I don't know, that giant giraffe guy maybe? Remember him, the largest land mammal ever, standing well over 40,000 pounds? But yeah, you're right, this massive slab of pork chop does look pretty hefty. There's also the Stegotetrabelodon, a four-tusked freak with teeth so long it probably could have used them as stilts. But beyond looking kind of silly, I don't have much to say about it, and in a similar vein, there are a few dozen others that are basically just regular modern elephants with one or two features that are grossly exaggerated. Who would have thought that the modern incarnation would actually be one of its simplest designs? Anyway, that's basically all I have for you guys today, but I would like to shout out Manatee from my Discord server, the bona fide elephant expert, who helped a lot with the early research on this video, alongside my brother Webb, who helped a bit later on. And as for the floor shunt, last week's winners were Sam Sam 2, Ricardo Di Pietro, and Max and Times from, from the Discord server. Though a lot of people were talking about how I hit them way harder last time, and two of them still haven't been found at all. I don't blame you guys though, I hit them both in a single frame of animation, I got pretty devious with it, but if you find any this time, then let me know in the comments down below or on the Discord server, link in the description. And until next time, don't die, see you later. I've been working on the elephant video, but while I've been doing that, uh, there's this puppy that's been sleeping on my feet. <laughs> Look at how cute she is. <laughs>